Okay, right, let's have a look at this. So it's gonna be a little bit laggy because we've got MoGraph and Dynamics going on. And then it goes into the Maxon logo. Okay, so this is what we're gonna create. Um, yes, because it's got Dynamics as well with it. It's a little bit slower um, to play it back uh, through the session, but, but hey. Right, so again, I'm going to, do you know what? I'm just gonna grab my Maxon logo spline again, um, just so I have that ready. And so what we're gonna do, we're going to define two different shapes. So for anyone who's following along, you can use like the Maxon logo and I ended up with using it like an M text spline, but you can use whatever, whatever splines you wanna use, whatever text you wanna use, whatever shapes you wanna use for this. Um, and we're gonna morph basically between uh, the two shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab myself a text spline. And so my first kind of um, shape that my clones were making up was the M. I'm just gonna type in the letter M. I'm gonna grab sort of a bit of like a blocky font um, cause it's gonna work. It's gonna work well for it, I think. And I'm just gonna align it to the middle. Cool. So I'm also now gonna paste in my Maxon logo. I'm just gonna sort of raise it up. And so for this, it's really handy if they're sort of similar in size, just cause it's gonna make the morph look a little bit smoother. Um, they don't have to be in the same location though. We could have kind of one over to this side or one to this side and they could like morph into that one. Uh, but I'm just gonna have it morph in the same place um, just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have our two splines. So we have our Maxon logo spline. And we have our M text spline. Let me just write M text spline. So now we need to turn these into geometry again. And so what I'm going to do, I've highlighted both. So I've selected both and they're now orange. I'm going to hold the option key and I'm going to grab an extrude. And what it does is it's clever enough to then put both of those splines in their own extrude. And now because I haven't pressed anything else, I actually have access to the attributes of both extrude objects. And so down in here, I can change my offset. I'm gonna do 35 again. It's, it's working out to be a good number today. And what it's done is it's actually adjusted the offset of both my extrudes. So if I now just like click off of them, we can see that both now have an offset of 35. Okay, right. So I'm gonna call this extrude uh, logo just to kind of um, keep track because we're going to be duplicating a couple of things and so it's always handy to know um, which is which and this is going to be my extrude M. I'm just going to deactivate my um, my logo extrude and my logo spline because I'm going to work with the M first. Right so the first step well the second step is to now um, use this shape to define the shape in which a cloner is going to make up. And so I'm gonna grab a cube because that's what I make my um, shapes out of. I clone a cube and I'm gonna make it um, really small. So another little tip, if you highlight your X, Y, and Z, so I'm just gonna click the X and I'm gonna hold the shift key, Y and Z. So they're now all orange. Right, so they're all selected. I'm gonna come into this top one. I'm gonna put 20, but I'm not gonna press enter yet. I'm gonna hold control and then press enter. And then it does um, all of them for you. I've also realized that 20 is now too big. So I'm gonna do that again, but with five centimeters. Cool. And then um, just to make some nice rounding, I'm just going to add a little fillet and I'm gonna do a radius of 0.1 because it's, because it's so small. Okay, right, so now what we need to do is we want to clone these cubes in the shape of this M. And Matt showed us how we can do that using the cloner in object mode. So if we grab ourselves a cloner, because we wanna clone our cubes, we're gonna make our cubes a child of our cloner. And by default, it's set to grid array. If I set this to object, 
we then have this object tab here and we can now um, drop in our extrude M. So I'm just going to drop in my extrude M and it's doing its best to clone the cubes over this M shape. But unfortunately, we only have a count of 20. So it's definitely not enough. So I'm going to up this to let's try 500 for now. And what I'm going to do at the moment, it's distributing the surface, but I actually want them to make up the volume. So I'm going to select volume. And then all I need to do, because I still want to use the information of this M shape, I don't want to deactivate it because then it will no longer work in my cloner. But I can use these little kind of like traffic light dots here. And if I just make them both red, they're going to be hidden from my scene, hidden from my render, but their information is still within Cinema 4D for me to use inside my cloner. Okay, so I'm also thinking maybe this count is um, not enough. Let's go, let's go 800. Right, so that's looking okay. Um, let's add a bit of variation uh, really quickly, and we can do that with our random effector. So with our cloner selected, I can now select my random effector. And in my parameters, we can just adjust our uniform scale. So I switched off position then, switched on scale, switched on uniform scale, and then let's do a value of, it's a bit too big, value of 0.5. So now we have a bit of like nice variation. And so we can now see our M shape that our cubes are taking up. So I'm going to name this cloner, cloner A, because we're going to end up with another one. And now I need to do this exact same setup, but for my Maxon logo shape object. So I'm going to switch these back on. And we can actually just kind of switch off this cloner A for now. And so the way that we can do this really quickly, because we've already set everything up, we can actually grab our cloner A and we can just duplicate it. We're going to call it cloner B, cloner B, switch it back on. And then inside my cloner, we need to make sure we replace this M shape for our logo shape. And now we can see that working. And now what we can do, we can just use our same um, kind of traffic light buttons here to just hide this. OK. Right. So we now have. Our M made up of uh, cloned cubes. And we have our. Maxon uh, logo. But how do we morph between the two? How do we actually kind of create the animation? I mean, you could use a you could use a plane effector and you could scale one down as one scales up. That's a cool way of doing it. But we could actually use a, um, a whole new effector this time, and that's the inheritance effector. What I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back on cloner A and I'm going to hide cloner B because we want to start off with the M and then we want it to turn into the Maxon logo. So I have my cloner A selected, which is my M cloner. I'm going to come up to my MoGraph menu and I'm going to use an inheritance effector. And it kind of, you can kind of already figure out what the effectors do based on what they're called. And so what we can do with the inheritance effector, we can have it inherit um, another object, which is going to be our, our cloner B. So what we can do, Inside my inheritance effector, we have this object um, kind of uh, option again where we can drag and drop something in. And so we can drag and drop our cloner B because we want to say, OK, cloner A, we want you to inherit um, the position scale and rotation of cloner B, which is our Maxon logo um, cube clone shape. So let's drag that in there. And nothing's happened for now. But we now have access. Now we've dropped that in there. We have this morph motion object um, checkbox. And as soon as I check that. Oh, it switched into the Maxon logo shape. But that's good. That's what we wanted, because now. We can actually move our strength slider of our inheritance effector. 
to create our more. And again, we have this keyframe option. So we can actually keyframe this, um, this um, animation. So on frame zero, I'm going to keyframe my inheritance strength. I'm going to start on 0% because I want it to start um, in the shape of the M. So I'm going to keyframe that. And then at frame 120, I'm then going to pull this all the way across to 100%. And now I'm telling it, OK, so at frame 120, I want the inheritance effector to be at a strength of 100%. Meaning, if we play, if we go back to the beginning and play through, we're actually animating a morph between our two shapes or our two logos or, or our two objects. That's awesome. I love that one. <laughs> and the only other little additional bit I did, so I added dynamics just to see what it looked like. I mean, I like it. I quite like it like this. I think it's really smooth and really clean, but we can actually use dynamics on this as well, um, which is something we went through last week. So on my clone at A, I can just right click, and under simulation, we want to use rigid body because we want our cubes to interact with each other. So as they're morphing, they're actually going to kind of like, they're not going to intersect. They kind of just bounce off of each other until they eventually create this new, this new Maxon shape. The only thing we need to do is to prevent it from falling through the sky, we can um, use this um, force follow position and follow rotation. And if we set a value of 10 in here, what it's going to do, the rigid body um, is going to, the dynamic is going to kick in, but it's not going to make it drop to the floor, um, but it's still going to interact with um, all the other dynamic objects. So now we've got that on there. Let's press play. So we can see they drop slightly. And now what they're doing, they're sort of fighting their way through each other to create this um, Maxon logo um, shape. 